Hi guys, thanks very much for chatting to us. Um, <coughs> could you start off just by introducing us to the world of Repo, the genetic opera, and tell us about the genesis of the story and what, how it all came together? Well, um, I'm Charis Zdunich, I'm the co-creator of it, and Repo began as a stage play um, almost a decade ago. And Darren Smith and I uh, conceived of the idea, and it started out as uh, basically a two-person show. Uh, we were doing what we called 10-minute operas, 10-minute stories put to music, and it was more almost performance art than it was opera or musical theater. And uh, we had this idea uh, of this future where <laughs> organ repossessions are legal, and you know, of all the 10-minute operas we were doing, they're all different stories. That one seemed to really click with audiences, so we sort of were empowered to expand the story. And uh, it kept growing. It, it became a uh, successful show in LA, and then it went to off-Broadway. And then uh, we shot a 10-minute short film to help find financing for the movie. So in a nutshell, that's the history of Repo. Okay. And Darren, when did you come in as, as director for the big screen version? Well, I came in, I, did the, I directed the first stage show in right. uh, 2001. Oh. So I was with it uh, when it was on stage. Um, and, and, and watching it, uh, or actually seeing the, the first stage show and what we accomplished, I said to these guys, if we, if we ever have a chance to turn this into a movie, we need to. This, this, is, this needs to be uh, on the big screen. And uh, we all kind of went our separate ways, or I went my separate way, I went off and did the Saw movies. But I think uh, it didn't really click that this was an actual possibility until uh, Saw 2 opened up, number one. And then, uh, then uh, yeah. uh, we, we all reconnected and said, okay, let's, let's do this. Um, but it was a battle, I mean, to get this thing on the big screen. It's, it's been a battle from day one to get this on the big screen, because it's not a cookie-cutter normal movie. It's very no. strange, very different. And uh, so it took us, you know, two years after Saw 2 came out, three years, to actually get a studio to agree to make it. Um, so in terms of Darren, once it started turning into a film, were you still involved in it? I mean, have you been involved in the creative process all the way through it? Yes, we were involved in it, I th I'd say, in every, every stage from... Uh, for myself, I I am um, the co-composer of the music, and I conducted a lot of the the, uh, the music that we were performing uh, for the soundtrack, which eventually made it into the film. Conducted the rehearsals for the singers, and of course, as Terrence was saying, this is an opera. This this is sung from beginning to end, and so everything is very different from a quote-unquote normal film. Mm -hmm. First of all. If you look at our script, I mean, people are looking at it, turning it upside down, like, <laughs> what is this thing? Because it doesn't look like a regular script. It's, it's all sung libretto. Then, before we actually filmed this, we actually had to have the actors come in and sing their parts. Mm -hmm. And that was, they had to essentially act out in their mind's eye. And of course, Darren and, and Terrence were there with me. The, in a studio, just actually, thinking, what is my performance going to be like two months later when yes. we actually do Yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah. yeah, so we were involved in that process, then we filmed in Toronto, and all of us were there during that whole event and post-production as well. Mm. And of course, this is, we consider going on tour as part of the process too. Yeah. Being the fans who are bringing something to the table um, are really making it a, a part of the whole process in the sense that this isn't a fixed thing like a normal film. It's a film that we wrap the film, it's done, you show it up there. Um, it's changing every time there's a performance because every time people are shouting out different things, every time people are actually acting out different things, they're getting naked at different type places during Well, I think, I think we should backtrack and explain <laughs> yeah, what we're talking yeah, exactly. about with Repo. It's not like it's not like a normal movie. A normal movie, like, you know, you finish it, you watch it, and that's yeah. it. Repo, that's not what happens. It, it, we, even though it's coming out of DVD in the UK, mm. uh, the hope is that it'll also go back to theaters for midnight shows. That's yes. what happened in the yeah. states. We uh, we came out on DVD, and now we're in thirty theaters, even after the DVD came Excellent. out. Because that's what happened really is. Nice. People that's are more than we were for our initial release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so that should be great for you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. And, but what's, what's amazing is I don't know if you've ever seen Rocky Horror mm. in, a, in a theater, but what was happening is people are showing up to the movie theater. They're sitting down, but they're all wearing costumes. When the movie starts, they jump up and they get in front of the screens and they start Excellent. dancing and singing and talking. People are getting naked in front of the screens. Yeah. And like, it's turning this like liberating, sexual, crazy, whatever thing. And that's what Repo is. Mm. Repo is not the movie. Repo is not us. Repo is the insanity, what happens when the movie begins. Right. And I think that, uh, you know, it's bigger than any of us could have hoped for, to actually see this kind mm. of, it, 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 
becoming a metamorphosis from, from being a little stage show in a black box theater that's filming this movie to now the fans taking it over and making it their own. Yeah, it's an amazing social phenomenon in a hmm. sense because, um, you know, as Terrence said, you know, we started out, it was the two of us just up on stage doing things. Then when we found this incredible cast, um, that became part of our family. And the crew became part of our family too. And even the, the grips, the, you know, all the, all the folks who came hmm. there, they were doing this because it was a passion project. They were getting paid, of course, yeah. but, but they were doing it as a passion thing too. They were coming out of the men's room singing our songs <laughs> while, you know, while we're doing a, you know, we're doing a, whatever, a timeout on the, on the filming. Um, then afterwards, to see the, the amount of people who are coming up to us, people, you know, on the street, I don't know who they are, they seem to know me. <laughs> Um, and you know, I, I really think it, it has, it, it did start out, or it became this way because we really do respect the fans. I mean, yeah, we love that, that they love yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. We didn't compromise our vision. We did exactly what we wanted to mm. do. We made the film we wanted to make, and we were just hoping there are other people out there going to like it. Connect with it. Yeah, I can, to it. Yes. I can say one of the craziest things for me, at least, is, you know. I've been involved with a massive horror franchise, yet yes. I was kind of, and here's a movie that's in 3,000 screens, that has billboards everywhere, that buses mm. are carrying around the Saw logo, yet I was never recognized. I, I think that maybe once or twice the odd person would come up to me and say, wait, didn't you direct Saw? Yeah. Um, with this movie, anywhere we go, people recognize yeah. us and talk to us. Like, Terrence and I were in New Orleans last week, two weeks ago. And we were walking down Bourbon Street, and these two people came up to us and said, wait a minute, you guys are the Saw? Are you guys are the repo guys? And uh, it's crazy because that never happened with Saw. And, hmm. you know, even, I was, at, I was at dinner the other night, and I turned my credit card in. I'm sorry, it's almost like a Fight Club type experience, because the people that we saw in New Orleans, yeah, he, was yeah. like, he was like, I work at the Blockbuster yeah. video. Yeah. I, I push it to everybody. And then yeah. just kind of walks off. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Durkin. <laughs> no, I know. We I was at dinner. Like a secret organization. <laughs> I was at dinner. This is, this is crazy what happens. I'm at dinner and I turn my credit card over. And the guy walks back and he hands me my credit card and he goes, Repo's my favorite. Oh. <laughs> he walks away and I'm like, all right. So it's, it is crazy that, that, that the fan base is actually propelling what Repo is, not yeah. us. And this isn't the result of any big marketing effort, yeah. you know, any big bucks mm. out there. We're not on any billboards out I mean, this is really groundswell no, in, in I, grassroots. I think what's great is how fast it's happening. Yeah. I, I, yes. think, I think we always wanted this. I think we always hoped it would be. I mean, it's it's a it's an opera for Christ's sake. It mm. should feel like a concert yes. in some ways. Mm. And I and I think we always hoped that down the road people would be dressing up like the characters. But I did not expect before it was even a, before yeah. most people would even see yeah. it. I guess thank God for YouTube because I think oh, it sort of yeah. sped up the whole process. It, it allowed, it allowed you to be people to be everywhere at once. The internet. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think yeah. Rocky Horror took you know thirty years yes. for it to actually be what it is now. Yeah. Uh, with with Repo, I think it's it's not Rocky Horror would have happened overnight if they had YouTube and the internet. Yeah. But they didn't have YouTube yeah. and the internet. I think that we are so lucky because of that because. <laughs> Um, everyone can post whatever they want. The other thing is mm. blogs. I mean, thank God for MySpace and Facebook. Yeah, oh, and yes, that's yeah. that's how we market this movie. Yeah. That's how we've been marketing the movie is through Facebook and mm. MySpace and YouTube. So real grassroots, so very yeah. grassroots. Yeah, so, um, can you talk about the cast because it's, it's a really fantastic collection of people you've got there. I mean, did you cast them as singers or as actors, or did you just hope they could sing, or did you, was there specific people well, you wanted to work with? Well, well, I guess first thing to say is that you, you know this is a. Everything about Repo is different than your normal movie. And one of the things that was different is that everybody had to come in and sing. Mm. We had to hear them sing. Yeah. Uh, even though, uh, you know, so, like for example, Paul Servino. Everyone yeah, knows he can act. Yeah. And if it wasn't singing, yeah. you could see how Roddy Largo, which mm. is the character he plays, would be a natural fit for someone like him. But in a movie like Repo, unlike even something like Chicago, for example, which had Richard Gere and other big stars, there's still a lot of talking in Chicago. So mm. really they only need to get the actors to be in tune and sing in time for maybe a three minute number. And the rest of the time they can just act and do what, they, what everyone knows them as. Repo, once we starts, everybody's singing and they don't stop singing until it's over. Yeah. Until the fat lady dies, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, had, we had to hear everybody. But uh, no, we, um, you know, we wrote these roles uh, years ago, obviously before realizing someone like Paul Servino would be able to be in our movie. Yeah. But we wrote what I think are sort of like operatic archetypes. And so 
you know, we just had to find people that sort of fit that, and we, we put together sort of our dream list of people that we thought could play the roles, and I'm happy to say that pretty much everyone we got was on our list. Right. And Repo's so wacky that you either get it or you don't, and the casting was much the same way. If you hand them the script, they either be like, what the hell is this? Or they're gonna be like, this is really cool, yeah. I wanna be in it. It's and different, so, yeah. 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 One and, thing I was intrigued was um, I was looking at you did the short version before you did this, um, and you had Michael Rooker, yeah, who yeah. For, for me will forever be Henry from Henry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, was was that? Uh, does he sing? I mean, did no. you want him? It's in funny. One? It, 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 this, is the, this is a crazy kismet, crazy insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when when we first started doing the stage show, Terrence's costume from Grave Robber mm. was a Henry Porter of a serial killer shirt. That was his costume. Oh, I've got yeah, one of and, and so, and that was that was from like two thousand. 2002, 2002. 2001. Yeah, so so that was that. So I I it, I would say that I have very few Hollywood friends, hmm. and Michael Rooker's one of them. I knew Michael Rooker. Oh, so when I when I did the when I did the thing with Terrence, the stage play, I was like, dude, you're wearing Michael Rooker's T-shirt. I know Michael Rooker, and I was like, haha. Well, then when we were doing the stage show. Pure coincidence. Hmm. Michael Rooker happened to be in Toronto at that time, and I called him up, and I was like, would you come do play Repo Man? He's like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I'll come do Repo Man. <laughs> And so it was crazy because it was just all coincidence that I mm. happened to know Michael Rooker, which he happened to wear the shirt of, the, 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 the short film. I actually asked Michael Rooker um, before we started casting, I was mm. like, hey, do you want to be in Reaper? He goes, I can't sing, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I was like, okay, no, you can't, you can't well, do it. When I told him the story, because yeah. I met him, I was sort of, uh, it was definitely like kind of a fanboy moment, because mm. I'm a big fan of Henry and, and yeah. other films he's done. Oh, he's such powerful. He is. And, and I told him, I said, you know, yeah. my Grave Rubber costume, it actually, yeah. your face was on my shirt. And I, and I tried to explain it to him like it was some sort of cosmic uh, mm. alignment. He looked at me and goes, that just means you have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Batman now. Yeah, he's like Batman. Batman. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, Darren, could you talk about the look of the film? Because I, mean, I saw it again yesterday. I went to the screening of the yeah. Prince Charles, and that's the first time I've seen it at the cinema. And what really comes across is that there's a very stylized look to it. I mean, sometimes with Alexa Varga, it, it's her face, uh, her hair blends in yeah. with the background. I mean, is, what were you trying to achieve there? Was that a, I, what yeah, you no, it was. Well, here, here's the first. The first thing is we had no money to make this movie, none. Right. And so we had to be very creative with the backgrounds as well as the actual overall look of the movie. And it started off that Terrence and I were talking that what if we did it like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? I don't know if you know, remember that, mm. but basically Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was cardboard cutouts, and then they put them against a painted backdrop. It was very, well, that was our, one of our original ideas because we had no money. Sort of stage flats, but oh, with perspective. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perspective yeah. on a two dimensional surface. Because they did an analysis of the, uh, the script that we originally turned in, and it was going to be like, what, a $40 million? Forty. Film. The whole movie was $40 million, and we had eight. Well, we're just going to five. We had five, five. <laughs> we had five <laughs> to make it. And then, so we, we had to start cutting stuff out. So, what we decided yeah. to do is, is to reuse all the flats of Saw. Which, if you look at it, mm. a lot of the saw stuff is there, but we just repainted it. Oh. Um, and, and do really stylistic things with the lighting. And mm. one of my favorite movies that I, I compare this to, my inspiration, there's two movies in this Brazil and Dick Tracy. Oh, and yeah. uh, Dick yeah. Tracy was such harsh colors and bright, vibrant colors. Mm. And it was a, uh, I think the guy's name was Storaro. Storaro. Storaro was the DP. And we actually used all Storaro gels. I'm probably saying his name wrong which means that they were so bright and vibrant. We shot it on HD, which is a choice because again, the future I, I always think is gonna be crystal clear and, and beautiful. So we shot on HD, we had an amazing DP, Joseph White, who uh, I wanted everything to look uh, glowy and radiant. Yes. And so um, it was crazy, we shot it that way. This was not a, really a post thing, it was shot that way. So we basically, you know, in some respects, shot ourselves in the foot if we wanted to change it later, but we didn't. Hmm. And so, you know, everything was shot that way. We used a lot of fog machines, a lot of haze to kind of soften everything up. Really was um, contrasty, but I wanted it to look beautiful and, and fairy tale, almost like uh, I always thought of this movie as kind of like Alice in Wonderland. It's Shiloh goes down the rabbit hole hmm. in the very beginning, and here's this crazy, interesting world and the kooky characters she meets. Um, and that's we wanted this to look like a fairy tale. And I think that uh, it, they, they pulled it off, it looks great. Yeah, that's certainly how it comes across. And yeah. I think that the, actually in that sense the budget was a blessing in disguise because like Darren said... Never say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Not the money I got from it, that wasn't a blessing. <laughs> you got money? I spent money. Yeah, five bucks I paid last night. But it, basically in the sense that we didn't do any location shots. We, you know, everything was down into this world. Mm. And that's exactly what Terrence and I wanted from the start when we, we had thought about initially, even when it was a 10 minute opera, 
This is a bizarre, surreal world. It has its own logic within it. It has its own emotional resonance um, that hopefully people today's time can you know, identify with this, which takes place in 2056 and it's with all these bizarre conditions. But I think the fact is that we didn't go on location and do these different things actually helped to, pr to create a kind of cohesive whole. And what was it like being on those sets each day? I mean, was, was it, it was, it was crazy. Because, well, Gina's thing it's interesting and fun. Um, that's the same place they shot Saw 5. Um, we oh. shot part of Saw 4 there. It's one massive soundstage. Right. And it's crazy to think, you'd, it, was, it, was, it was really like being in a fantasy world because you'd, you'd be outside and it'd be snowing outside or whatever, and you'd walk in to a garage basically, and all of a sudden there's the world of Repo. There was a massive cemetery with hanging chandeliers and, and you know big mosques. And then you walk 10 feet over and there's a huge opera stage. Hmm. And you walk 10 feet over and there's the Wallace household. And it was, I mean, it was amazing. And it really, we were talking about before um, in another interview how Repo was like being on a circus every day. Because yeah. we, the, one of the big sets was a Jinko Square. Yeah. And I wanted to fill it with colorful characters. And so we had, we had transvestite, transgender, uh, bearded ladies, uh, <laughs> men on stilts, fire eaters, little people. Uh, the only thing we were missing was a giraffe. I mean, we even had popcorn <laughs> machines and cotton candy machines going. <laughs> and it was crazy because, you know, we were always blaring music because you had to lip sync back to your original songs. Mm -hmm. You had crazy women on stilts walking around. And it was like, this is a movie. We were getting paid. We actually didn't get paid to make it. <laughs> it's like, we're, this, this is Good awesome. Experience. Yeah, it was, I mean, it, was, it was amazing. The sets were incredible. David Hackle, who directed Song 5, mm -hmm. uh, did the sets for this movie. I mean, oh, right. it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, there's a real rock and roll vibe in there. And it's yeah. an abandoned old metal factory. So by, by itself, the thing is just perfect yeah, for the world yeah. of Repo. It about was as contaminated as the world of Repo, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dust and crap in there was... Uh, it's best of well, yeah. it. all adds to the, the atmosphere yeah, exactly. of the film. Yeah. Yeah. Really comes Method across. acting, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, Darren, as a director, were you? How difficult was it? Because I'm assuming they recorded all the the song, I mean, well, the opera before, and then you had yeah. to make the film to that. So were you involved in the process of recording, and, and then did that yeah. make your life harder? Yeah, you know, it, it was. Um, I, I think that, that making this movie was a constant learning experience for everyone involved. Um, I remember when the producers first got on board, they told me they wanted me to be in Toronto and let Darren and Terrence handle the actors and, and singing, mm -hmm. and I threw a complete temper tantrum because. In, what is the movie? It's singing. The whole movie is song, and that's the actor's performances. What does the director do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he says point the camera there, but his job is to get the performances out of the actors. And so I convinced them to let me go back, and that thank God that I was in the recording studio because that is where the actors made their choices. Yeah. That's where yeah. Anthony had decided he was going to do a low, grumbly voice. That's where Sarah Brightman decided how she was going to sing. Um, and so I was there for, for all the recording. Mm -hmm. Uh, Darren, you know, Darren Smith was there months before I was actually working with the instrumentation and the music, and months after I was. But you know, it was it was crazy because I was so. Um, I don't want to say it was. I'm trying to think of the right word I was using. I, I, I was. This movie was so important to me in my career because it was a big departure. Saw films yes, that I wanted to make sure every step of the way it wasn't being contaminated mm -hmm. by by the suits, and I hate to use that thing, but, <laughs> I know you mean. Yeah. I, but I didn't want it to be contaminated or dumbed down or anything like that, so I was very anal to, 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 like, to be there every step of the way to make sure that no one was coming in there and trying to water it down, and mm -hmm. I think that there was a lot of fighting and there was a lot of bur bridge burning, but in the very end, I'm happy with the product, I'm yeah. glad that we, we had the battles that we did. Luckily, we made the movie with Twisted Pictures, who I'd done four movies with and so they were great, but you know, I think that it was a learning process for everyone. So hopefully we get to do Repo 2 and it'll be a lot easier. And well, I was going to ask about that. Is it, because uh, it almost has a very open ending. I mean, is, is there an intent to have a, a to follow up? Did you write someone writes a check for the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I mean, artistically, would, you know, did you think, right, this is going to be a two part or a trilogy? Or yeah, yes. I think we all did. And mm. I think because we've been working on this for nine years, I mean, we mm. have story upon story upon story. I mean, you could deep link this thing mm. to God knows to, to, to infinity because we, we really have all these stories which take place within the world of Repo. Um, I just wanted to add the recording studio. Oh, this is this great experience because if you can imagine, there's all these different rooms where we're recording si and, and, and rehearsing simultaneously. So I might be in one room 
working with David J. of Bauhaus on, on his bass mm -hmm. part, and then we then we're out there in, in tinkering on the piano with Paris Hilton, who's learning her song, with Sarah Brightman and Anthony Stewart Head. I mean, it was just all at once. It's just this incredible mm. experience. Yeah, it must have been really good. It was great. Um, so, have you taken this on the road? What was the release in America? Have you taken this well, on the road as well? Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry. This is I'm glad that you saw it in a the theater. But mm. what you saw was nothing like it is in America. And right. I think that because this is the first, this is UK's first taste of it. Yeah. In America, there there are 800 people lined around blocks. They're Excellent. all dressed up. Yeah. They're singing. Like an example, it is, we would drive up, and one of my favorite experiences was like Boston. We went to Boston and it was snowing outside. Mm. And there was a line of people that wrap around about, I would say two blocks, that were wrapping around the theater, down the street, wow. in the snow, all wearing next to corsets. nothing, corsets, mm -hmm. next to nothing. <laughs> hot, there were people out there giving hot chocolate away yeah. and they were all singing repo. Yeah. They get in the theater and every single one of them is screaming at the screen. They're dancing in the aisles. Mm -hmm. They're half naked, like jumping in front of the screen. And that's what Repo is. It's yeah. insanity. It's right. it's not what you saw last night. What you saw last night, I think, is, is again UK's first taste of it. Yeah. To say, okay, I see what this is. Mm. Wait a month. Yeah. Wait a month, yeah. and you'll see it at midnight yeah. in different screenings. And, and quite a social event because people come in and, and they they know each other only mm. because they see they they go onto a Repo Opera right. website and they're on these boards and they're like, well, uh, looks like Repo is showing in Phoenix. Why don't we all fly out? I don't know who you are, yeah. but I'll go <laughs> bunk with you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, so it's, it's just amazing. Nice. So Repo's they, become a dating site. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Repo-opera.com. Yeah. You, you can get a hookup on there. It's here. better than um, eHarmony. It yeah. is, it is. <laughs> um, so what are you guys working on next? Is there, you know, hopefully there'll be a follow-up to Repo, but have you got any other plans? Are you uh, working on another opera, working on what's next for you guys? Uh, well, for me, I'm actually working on a graphic novel, mm. um, a story I've been chewing on for several years and uh, been touring so much, I'm really looking forward to after this tour, when this mm. tour ends, getting back home and starting to draw it. But uh, that's my next project. Because okay. I was Lost. interested, um, you worked on, uh, you do storyboards for films mm -hmm. as well, don't you? You worked on the Germs film. Yes, I did. What, what we do in secret. Well, you know what's wild about that? Oh. The very first uh, road tour stop, we yeah. did, it was in this grindhouse, grimy theater in Brilliant. Portland, Oregon. And it was a double feature, Repo and What We Do Is Secret. <sighs> Just total coincidence, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I thought that was great. And on another night, yeah. we, we were at this theater where there was Big Lebowski and Repo, oh, yeah. and Rocky <laughs> Horror and Repo. So it seems like when you when you see that on the marquee, you're like, yeah, we're in good yeah, company. You're in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. I'm doing two movies. Um, one, of them, one of them I'm really excited about is called Akula. Um, hmm. It's a... It's a submarine heist movie, which is completely oh. outside of my genre. It's a, uh, it's like the anti Ocean's Eleven. It's yeah. like Ocean's Eleven, on crack. Oh. Uh, so we're doing. I'm doing that next. Right. Um, that sounds really interesting. It's it's submarine. Kind of a submarine yeah. heist. Yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty. Submarine awesome. heist opera. Yeah. <laughs> submarine heist. Opera. <laughs> <laughs> submarine game. Court please. Submarine game. And, and I'm working on music. So and 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 different projects, mm. but as it relates to Repo, I'm, yeah. I'm writing music for each of our Repo armies. We have the fans of the mm. you know, Re SoCal Repo Army, we have the Michigan Repo Army, etc. Oh. Portugal Repo yeah. Army. So I'm writing songs and music for each one of these oh, armies, so everybody's yeah. got their own thing. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Um, and one final question. One thing we do on our website is we talk about people's influences and their inspirations. I wonder if you guys wouldn't mind just talking about who inspired you or who you like watching, you know, in any, in any genre, films, music, books, anything, whatever sort of, you know, is your favorite thing. Uh, well, I'll start. I mean, I, you know, it, it sort of changes for me. Like, of course, yeah. For me, like when I listen to music, I, I tend to find that uh, I'll, I'll have like a CD rotation of one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. week, yeah, yeah. I like that because uh, you get to know this. Yeah, you get to really know it. It I mean, really sticks in your head. I mean, musically, presently, I'm a huge uh, fan of Tom Waits. Oh, uh, always, his, yeah. his stuff is uh, it just it just he can do no wrong for me. Mm. Right now. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, you know, as a singer, um, early influences were like um, uh, Elvis mm. and Glenn Danzig. Misfits. Oh yeah. yeah, when I heard yeah, I heard that, that I was like, was. Elvis can be evil? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well that was his nickname for a while, wasn't it? Evil Elvis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah. That, that was a big, and, I, and I, as Grave Robber, I felt like I was sort of channeling, uh, I don't know, a mixture mm. of like, David Bowie from Labyrinth meets, uh, yeah, that, meets Glenn yeah. Danzig. Yeah. Actually, so. that, that helps though, that, that puts uh, Repo into a little bit more context as well. Let's sing about the Misfits angle. Ah. I kind of, yeah, that, that, that's really, I can see that coming through, yeah. Um, I would say, from a filmmaker standpoint, um, 
you know, someone like Wes Craven's mm. early stuff, because Wes Craven was taking massive risk. I mean, here yeah. it was, Last yeah. House on the Left was one of the most violent, it's, brutal. It still is, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, even yeah. today it holds up. Mm. Um, also, people like Jim Jarmusch or yeah. David Lynch, um, who are guys that really could make mainstream mm. movies, but they say, screw it, fuck yeah. you guys, I'm gonna make yeah. what I wanna make. Yeah. And I think that David Lynch particularly proves that he can do success with a mainstream movie, whether he's doing mm. something like Dune or going to do like a straight story. Yeah. And then right after that going to do, you know, something crazy like Mulholland Drive. Or, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, so I think that he, I like him because he takes risks. Yeah. Um, also, Darren Aronofsky is a oh, huge is a yeah. huge thing because again, here's another guy that's that's making these extremely personal, out there, mm. crazy movies that again, the rewatch value. I every time I see them, I'm just amazed yeah. and blown away by them. Yeah. Um, so what did you think of the wrestler? Is it, if not, I, I really liked it. It was much yeah. different than I was expecting. Yeah. You know what I've noticed? That he's not following in like, I love Requiem for a Dream. Mm. But Fountain was nothing like Requiem yes. for a Dream and the wrestler yeah. is nothing like Fountain. Yeah. So it's, you can never know what you're going to get with Aronofsky. Mm. Um, and I would say lastly, um, influence wise, I would say, um, I totally just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I had this great, very profound thing to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the X factor. Yeah, oh, I, I have no idea. So that's yeah. Uh, oh, that's okay. we can come back. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much all over the map too. But mm. I, I think what I generally tend to like is there are things that are bizarre, but there's some sort of humanity within the bizarre, like mm. Charlie Kaufman, Eternal. Sunshine and yeah, Spotless Mind. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen uh, his new film, Synexit Off? No. New York? I haven't yeah. seen it yet. Amazing. Really? I mean, he directs it, so there's nobody to change his vision. Or, well, you know, it's good right. for him. And it becomes, it starts, seems like it's quite normal, it becomes more and more strange and epic as it goes along. I mean, I, I need to see it again because I can't, didn't really get it, but it, it's, it's oh, amazing. I've been Hoffman. wanting to see it, yeah. yeah. Hoffman's I mean, perfect. It. Hoffman. Yeah, that, um, Diane Arbus, the photographer. Mm. Um, St. Vincent, who's a uh, New York performance artist, mm. um, but just, you know, you know I, I tend to think I'm normal, but yeah. nobody else tends to, th to say the same about me. Um, but the, but uh, I love uh, World According to Garp, the, yes. the book, because again, it's just bizarre, and yet there's, there's this real, you know, real emotion. Um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch oh, is yes. definitely yeah, right yeah. there with was that any influence on you guys writing Repo? Because there's sort of similarities. I mean, the use of music and, and it's kind of an out there concept. I think for the most part, we had written it before we had seen mm. Hedwig. But I, but I, I have to say that you know, Terrence and I saw the stage show. Mm. And one thing that really blew me away was the fact that here's this character of Hedwig that hopefully none of us can really say that we've had this happen to us. <laughs> And it seemed so bizarre mm. on paper, and yet when she talked on stage and about her, you know, almost in tears about what happened to her, there wasn't a dry eye in the, mm. in the, in the house, including mine. I mean, I was just really touched by that, and I felt like this is the kind of art, this is exactly, we, we'd written Repo but I, 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 I already, but I, I said to myself, you know, I really want to maintain that idea that yes we are bizarre we are weird we are mm. dealing in this world that you know where people just repossess organs but hopefully people can come across with something that it touches their hearts somewhere yeah that's, that's a great note to leave it on well, thanks, thanks. Very much.